on today's episode of The Real DJ Show. I saw you guys at a wedding and I really enjoyed Mickey. Is it Mickey or Mikey? Yes. Which and one? Yes. 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 All right, yeah, yeah. very good. I, I really hate when you do that. <laughs> are, are really doing that? <laughs> <laughs> like, you ran up on me like... Uh, Is that I, Rich, if know. you run up somebody, or run up on somebody like that on the street, you won't get stabbed. You'd be DJing in a mother loving heart cloud. <laughs> what? How have y'all not? Everyone's talking. Well, I think these are Evox 12s, and I'm pretty sure those moving houses on the because we're evaluating You're the DJing setup. You're DJing in a not- mother loving heart cloud. How have we not? What? Oh, hey, it's Kristen and Cassie from Rochester Wedding Magazine, and you're listening to the Real DJ Show, and you should really listen to us because we know what the f- we're talking about. What you got? What is up? Another episode back of the Real DJ Show. What's up? My name is Rich Cranston. Of course, uh, encore personality John Roach is uh, sitting across the table, socially distanced from you me. Say by personality? the personality. You put, do have a good personality. You're gonna put. I'm gonna put that on my business card. <laughs> hey, uh, make some noise for our man Mickey in the box over there. What's up, producer Mickey? Mickey. Hey, 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 what's up? All right. Hey, so <laughs> at the Real DJ Show, uh, we've built this podcast uh, and YouTube channel for and about. Uh, you know, private event DJs. And dare I say, you could I'm, say it. I'm allowed to say mobile DJ, right? You could say it. It's not a bad sure. word to us. Yep. Um, and because of that, we want to make sure we kick off every episode we do with highlighting one of our friends out there in the world that's, you know, paying their dues and feeding their families uh, in this industry. Yeah. So, Mickey, let's roll the one thing. Let's go. I wake up, flex, I'm down that check. No drip this. What? Tell her, run it up. No sleep, no rest. All right, we are pleased to have with us Mr. David Hanscom from Y Entertainment. What's up, Dave? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate you Absol- uh, getting me on the show with you. From sunny Florida. I mean, so this is... We I'm love jealous. These, we love these sessions because, uh, you know, we're not at conventions right now. And we can't have uh, uh, beers at the bar, right? So, But right. we're having uh, conversations over Zoom. Hopefully soon. <laughs> well, it's Hopefully a little bit more like rainy Florida these days. But nevertheless, it's not snowy Florida, which has not happened in forever. So we'll, we'll take the rain over that. Love yeah, it. Yeah, man. Love it. Dave, give us the origin story of why entertainment and uh, how you came to be what you're doing now. Absolutely. Happy to do it. So I I actually started DJing when I was in high school. Uh, I went to school half a day. I worked at the local radio and television station the other half of the day. My dad was in the military, so we were stationed on the island of Bermuda. And and, uh, so I worked for the Armed Forces Radio and Television Services, or AFARTS. But that just sounds weird when you say it that way. So, (laughs) But uh, that's where it all started. And I thought my career was going to be in radio, but I quickly realized that very few people in radio make money. So I had to figure something else out. Uh, In the midst of doing that, I was working part-time in radio, part-time at a used CD uh, music store. And I met a gentleman who uh, told me all about, you know, the the world of weddings and mitzvahs and social events and corporate events and all of that stuff. And I said, OK, well, I feel like that's something I could probably work myself into. And so I said, you know, tell me more about this. And, and we just developed a really good bond. So it was kind of one of those deals where he was transitioning out. I was transitioning in and um, he, he said, hey, I've got a perfect client for you. I know for a fact that they don't have a DJ yet because we normally would be providing the service for them. And this is a great kickstart for you. And I said, okay, perfect. So he gives me this number of this guy. He doesn't tell me who it is, by the way. He gives me this number of this guy. And he says, here, give him a call. I don't care if you tell him you work for my company or whatever. If he calls me, I'll back you up on it, whatever. So I dialed the phone number and uh, the receptionist answers the phone, Jacksonville Jaguars, can I help you? And I'm like, holy wow, you know. This is like the NFL team of my local city. So I was like, oh, uh, is Roddy White there, please? And and, uh, she said, hold on just a moment. So he gets on the phone. Long story short, I start talking about asking about the the holiday party and this, that, and the other thing. And before I can even finish, he's like, oh, my God, we totally forgot. Our party is next Thursday. Can you help us? And I'm like, 
hang on a moment, let me put you on hold and I'll check my calendar. So I put him on hold and I do the happy dance, you know, like I'm super excited. Yeah. Lord knows I would have moved, you know, water and mountains in order to be able to do this event. So I just didn't want to let that on to him. So once I gained my composure, I got back on the phone and I was like, man, we got a lot going on, but I'm pretty sure we can fit that in. For that you. Is. Would love to do it. What are the details? And so that kind of just launched like my corporate slash social DJ career. That's awesome. However, um, there was a lot of stuff about the industry that I really didn't know and learn uh, until later on. And so I started like subcontracting with all these other companies and like just saying, listen, I really want to learn about this industry. I, I love the DJ in part. Like I I'll spend hours and hours and hours perfecting that. But the only way I can learn the business side of things is to really network and learn from other companies. And, and I'll be honest with you guys. Some people were like, yeah, no, we're not trying to, you know, teach our train our competition yeah, yeah, or whatever. Sure. But some people were kind of cool in the sense that they were like, yeah, no problem. And, you know, they had these little disclaimers and things like that. And I said, listen, I'm not trying to take anything away from you. I don't care about your clients, your clients, or your clients. The only thing I want from you is to learn. That's it. And the day I decide to go out and on my own, if that happens, I will will come up to you and be honest with you about it. And, and that's kind of how that all worked. Good story. It, it, getting a mentor, man, it's tough for people to, um, I think in our industry, to have that the, wrap your mind to swallow that it. pride pill to yeah. say, hey, look, I need a mentor. So, yeah. no, that's, that's a good Well, I, I think that part of it, here, here's, th this is just unsolicited uh, thought process in this, but I feel like part of it is because uh, so many people in our industry are are really, really attached to the craft of what they do. So this transcends beyond just DJs, um, cinematographers, photographers, wedding planners, like they're all really so personally attached to the service that they provide. Right. And if we if we look at it more from the standpoint of like, hey, let's get a mentor to help us with the part that we don't really typically usually care about, which is the business part. Like we care about it. Yes. The fact that we hope it's going to take care right. of us. Yeah. But who, have, how many of us could raise our hand and say, we went to college and got a small business exactly. degree, right? You're a DJ so, first and business owner second. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So smart. Yeah. Exactly. So I think if, if you just look at it from the lens of, I'm just trying to get somebody to help me make sure that in five years from now, I'm still going to be able to do this and do this at a high, at a high level, then it makes more sense when you have that conversation yeah. of a mentor. Good for you. All right, Dave. So this segment is called One Thing. So we're going to hold you to that to give us your secret sauce. Dave, what is the one thing for Y Entertainment? The one thing I think for Y Entertainment is that, uh, and ironically, I had to do an article for a magazine and they, they rephrased it a little bit differently, which was what is one word to describe your company? And I'm like, holy crap, how are you supposed to describe your company in one word? I thought, I thought, I thought, and then I was like, I'm on the spot. So I came up with the thought of chameleon. And to me, I, I think it totally defines who we are as a business because we, we blend in with the environment that's presented to us by our couples and, and our clients that are non-wedding couples right? yeah. or mm -hmm. non-wedding clients. Sure. Right? And so some of our events are like party on party, like people are dancing on the, on the tables and just doing crazy stuff and it's out of control. But honestly, we also do some events that um, we define as kind of like pub style events. You know, you, you go to your local bar and you're all hanging around drinking, singing songs, but people aren't on the dance floor and they're not yeah. worried about defining success of their event right. by how many people were on the dance floor. And so we've just really learned to blend in with that and not have like, you know, it's not a cookie cutter, like website template situation where it's like, do you want template A, B or C? It's like, what do you want? And then let us help you make that happen. That's Bravo. super smart, man. Bravo. All right, Dave, we appreciate you, man. I love your t-shirt. Keep Thank killing you. it. Uh, that I'm was look uh, you up next time I'm in Florida, man. Hey, yeah. do, do it. Next time do it. Love to hang out with you guys. Beer, beers yeah. in Vegas next time we see you. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Sounds good. All right, man. Uh, you stay Thanks, safe. Dave. Have a great season, man. Good Take meeting care. you. Thank you. You guys as well. Thank All you. Right. Later. Take care. Let's go. I wake up, flex, I'm down, that check, no drip, this, what? tell them run it up, no sleep, no rest. All right, so that was our one thing. Now look, uh, here's a little public service announcement because we don't want to insult the intelligence of our audience, our amazing, highly intelligent audience. So I'm going to break the fourth wall here a little bit, give you some insight. So uh, as we've previously <laughs> mentioned on some of these episodes, uh, we kind of cut them up and we use different things in different places. It's not always... Uh, linear. And the next segment you're about to see, it's our core topic. It's about building an A-team. We realized because we kind of did it out of order that we didn't give our guest a very good intro. So here is his intro. We're super excited that our core topic today, talking about building an A-team of vendors, is with Eric Jackling from Magic Moments Photography. Mickey, give me that cool segment. All right. So the topic, our core topic today is about, we're calling the 
the the episode building an A team. Of course, very and, important. And uh, yeah, important. so we're stoked to have Eric with us for that. Uh, yeah, still here because um, it's about vendors referring vendors and the and the you know the value of that and, and building these A teams. Like, we always joke, right, when we are working with a bunch of vendors at a wedding that we all like. Oh, well, you got the you got the A team. Got the A-team. But how, yeah. what goes into that, right? Yeah. So Eric, I'm going to ask you first. Um, yeah. Look, I, I always see you at these industry networking events. Yeah. It's like our social time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Love uh, it. And then anytime Rich and I come up with some crazy idea of some kind of marketing event or something to open house or something, let's go you to Vegas. Come to them, yeah. which we appreciate. Yeah. Uh, so what is the value for you in in doing those those networking things? Um, or if we have some wacky idea, if when you when you show up for those, I assume there's getting some benefit other than yeah. we're having beers. Yeah. Uh, but what's the value to you of, of like networking and building with other vendors? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's continuing the friendship that you establish on the wedding day. You know, it's always good to, you know, see faces and kind of keep that going, sh- show people you're still here. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, that kind of keep current, you know, know what's going on. And uh, of course, it kind of establishes that, that referral base, which is nice. Yeah, a couple Speaking, things out of that. I mean, yeah. to establish that you're still relevant, and you're still here, right? Because yeah. I mean, I, I know certain venues that stopped going to networking events and they just stopped doing events altogether, oh, and definitely. they're like off the face of the map and, and wondering no what happened. So, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing their arms up in the air and be like, "Why is no one booking our space? It's yeah. a beautiful space. They got the best restaurant in Rochester." Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> who are we talking about? But I mean, it's like seriously, and it's so important to network and and tell and show people that you're still relevant. Yeah, definitely, and I mean. Also, one thing too is like these people that we're working with on the wedding day, like you do form a friendship. You know, this is where, you know, we're married with kids and we're, our lives are so busy. So it's, you become friends with these people. So, you know, continuing that friendship, getting to see people, it, it kind of keeps that going. You know, it's a wonderful thing. And that, of course, it is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, with I mean, agree <laughs> or disagree. So when, when you're going to work, right, we, yeah. we've had shifts even outside of what we do now. Uh, we're going into work with a coworker that we don't really like. Yeah. Versus we go into work with a coworker that we do appreciate and, and do work well. I mean, what's what's obviously you look more forward to, the person that you mm-hmm. looking forward to, right? So but, yeah. but what how does that equate to the customer at that was at my wedding? question, right? Yeah. So like we look, I, I obviously know if I'm working a wedding and Eric's gonna be there, okay, this is a fun day for me. I right. get excited yeah. about that. Yeah. Um so there's value for me, but like Eric, what do you think is what's the value to someone who's having a wedding, planning a wedding by hiring like teams of people together? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of the stress or a lot of the burden off of them. You know, when we work together, it's like I know exactly what you guys are going to be doing. I know your routine. I know your flow. You guys know how I I operate, how I do things. I'm not going to steal the couple away for 45 minutes during sunsets. Yeah. So you don't have to yeah. stress about that. Um, it's also, I mean, there's even. I mean, obviously, we're going to communicate when we first see each other, but I've worked with you guys so much, we don't even have to communicate. Right. You know, I know totally. your flow. I know how it, how you operate. Um, and we can kind of put that together and just make an amazing evening for the couple. Really. So what? So the experience that the couple receives out of that is just better performance yes. out of their vendors. Yeah. And it's efficient. Yeah. Which is nice. I have a theory I, about something. I want to hear I what agree you both... That. Well, thanks. Okay, I haven't yeah. said it yet. Uh, I have a theory. I, I want both of your take on this. So I feel like, yeah, we naturally, because we become friends and we enjoy working with each other, we know each other's products good, right? Um, we build these kind of natural groups of vendors and we tend to see each other a lot. And it's not by accident that, yeah. you know, I see you more than my wife from May to October. <laughs> That's usually the case, yes. right? I don't think it's not an accident because we like to refer to each other as business. But I think what also happens is that people who manage a venue, Right, so the the owner or the operator of a particular venue, I think either it's subconsciously or maybe it's on purpose. They see us working together, and they want to be part of that. Or I don't know if they want us to be in the group, or they assume that we all work together well. But I feel like then that carries over to a venue manager who then ends up referring us all as a group. That group is that you think that's true? I think, I think that's true. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, I don't work in that space, but I've heard venue managers say that. I mean, it's all about it's all about taking the stress off their shoulders. Yeah. Right. You don't have to babysit the photographer. Oh, the definitely. Videography, the the DJ. Yeah. There's no babysit going on. I mean, that's yeah. Oh, 100 percent. And and there's even times where you know on a wedding day if they have like a church ceremony and then they'll have the you know the reception at a, a venue following. You know, there's a lot of venues in Rochester that, you know, I have the contact information for the, you know, the, the venue manager. 
So if we're you know running a few minutes behind schedule, or I'll just send them a nice little text saying, "Hey, just to give you a heads up, you know, this we're on pace for this time." Um, and they'll also communicate to me, so saying, "Hey, Eric, you know, we're we can actually use an extra little twenty minute buffer here." Right. So there's definitely perks to kind of having an A team there on the wedding day. Right. You know. Yeah. I think you said good. one of you, maybe you. I'll give you some credit. I think you said something. <laughs> <insi> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I want to give you some credit. There's something insightful you said before about a vendor, a wedding professional that's in our in our business that has stopped just stopped going to like networking events. So we have um, another topic, another episode talking about specifically about networking events. But they they stopped going to these things, these places where these A teams are built. I think are you know oftentimes these offsite events and and people stop going. And then I, I literally I'm going to tell the story again with with a different guest in another episode because I think it applies to both topics. But mm -hmm. I, I sat down with a very well respected wedding professional about a year ago. They, they wanted to have lunch with me, and they're they're immediately successful. You would know the name, say, oh, that's a very successful wedding professional. And they're like, I feel so out of it, like. Why am I not, you know, getting the referrals that I used to get? Why am I not involved? And I'm like, well, I haven't seen you at any of these things that we always would see each other at. And she goes, I just said she. I gave it. I made a good one. I don't want to give away. <laughs> but this person said, well, yeah, I I didn't feel like I needed to do a bridal show or networking event anymore because I was so successful. And I really think it's it's not about the immediate fill of your calendar. Like you can't measure the success of a networking event by did I get a wedding from it? Yeah. Right. So when you come to one of our open houses, right, yeah. and we're, you know, showing off our DJs to our clients, you know, I hope that you book a wedding. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I hope so. But I think that you get it that it might not like bear fruit immediately, right? It's not necessarily a tangible, quantifiable result from you know meeting and being part of these teams and being social and going to networking events but if you stop then eventually right. just not having being part of a team i think you're going to start seeing it degrade your business you're maybe in the long term seeds yeah you're planting seeds i mean that that's what it comes down to for sure yeah staying relevant yeah oh cool all right well look i appreciate you being here and talking about building an a team yeah. uh i think this is what i want to leave it on a note of i i, I guess explore a little more about like what's the value if, if someone's planning a wedding right now, you know, and they're hiring a vendor, um, you know, how important is building that A team to them? I mean, yeah. Building a team of vendors and, and, together. And you really have to take into consideration what the information that your vendor is giving you. Trust them, right? So they they they've yeah. seen they've seen it all, uh, and you trust that third party credibility because they know the strengths, the weaknesses of people in our industry, and really yeah. need to trust that. And when you when you group together a group that is really really good, the, the performance and the quality that you're going to get is is unbelievable. Yeah. I and would, you won't be able to, to evaluate that until you're at your wedding. So that's the tricky part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely look at that recommended vendor list. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason for it. Well, it's been a while since I've... Maybe you've probably been married the most recent, but you know, I'm thinking back to my own wedding and I didn't think about those things, but I would assume if someone's planning a wedding now, there is two layers of the vendor evaluation. Like, do I like them? Mm -hmm. But are they all going to work together well? Yeah. Right? Right. And so when you take that that credibility or the referral from another vendor, it takes a lot of that stress out. Yeah, I mean, right. there's some there's some care that, that should go into that too. You should you should evaluate both sides of that coin. So if you're if you are making the buy, you should consider are, are they good for me, but are they also going to yep. be able to get along and work well with others? <laughs> All right. So pro yeah. tip. Hire teams of vendors that refer each other. Yes. <laughs> Boom. Very good. good I'm on the couch. All right. Uh, welcome to another edition of BPM. We, this is weird. I'm looking at things I don't usually look at. Me? First off, you're way, way easier on the eyes than Johnny Roach. Mm -hmm. uh, B, Damn. we got some personality. Jordan Rakashevitz. Is that, <laughs> that's not her name at all. <laughs> It isn't. Close. It isn't. But okay. Anyways, <laughs> say, say your name. Like, say your name. Rack <laughs> so Rackowitz. Yeah. Jordan. It Nicole just sounds. It looks. Rackowitz. It looks like it would be just more like a little Rackowitz. Anyways, Anyways, that's BP. Hey, you know I love off. Ted. You know I do. Uh, this is the point where we have a uh, semi-intelligent debate. Uh, there's not going to be as many fifty-cent words now that John's on the couch. It's going to be more simple. It's simple. Be, be, <laughs> I don't be know right now because, what you're uh, frankly, I'm in the Neanderthal. Uh, but Mickey, roll the footage. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, 
You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. There it is. All right, so uh, I uh, prescribe to ladies first. So, Jordan, you're going to go first. Mickey, roll the wheel. All right, here's your first question. This one's up on wedding crashers. Do you welcome them in or do you bounce them out? Ooh. Absolutely bounce them out. What kind of ghetto nonsense is that? <laughs> <laughs> that is so ghetto. I can't believe. No, it, I worked a wedding, just photo booths, where it was Pomona. People came in from the woods. So it was like hick ghetto. <laughs> and they just came in, walked to the bar, and these bridesmaids were just like, get out. Get out! And just like rushed them out. I was like, oh, they some gangster bridesmaids. I want some true G bridesmaids like these. But yeah, kick them out. That's nasty. Ew. Is there a different opinion on that, Richard? <laughs> is there a different one? Is there a possible different opinion on that? Uh, negative. No, there isn't. No, they, they, they're they not welcome. They can't come here. It's a private event. It's a private event. Uh, get the hell out of my wedding. Johnny? I will say this, that generally speaking, you have to answer this question one way or the other because Mickey read it as a definitive instead of as a spectrum of answers. But I would say that in my career, have there been positive moments of wedding crashing? The answer is yes. For example, I was at a wedding venue that does multiple weddings at one time. An old school place, one of these party houses that like literally there's three weddings going on at once in three different rooms, right? And our wedding was bananas. Like people are hanging from the rafters. And at one point, a bridal party from the wedding next door, which was not having the same kind of wedding, poked their head in and saw how much fun we were having. And they went back to their wedding, grabbed a bunch of folks and brought them into the wedding that I was doing. And my bride and groom were so cool and the room was so big. Um, that they thought it was awesome that their wedding was so fun that another weddings like group came into our wedding. So, I mean, there are occasions where that's cool, but generally speaking, yeah, you got to kick them out. Or, or it could be cool that you're having uh, an actual networking event in your loft space and you have some <laughs> yeah. people crash said event. Uh, take weird pictures outside and, and piss the arbor loft off down the hallway uh, to the point where they're asking me who these uh, these people are. Yeah, weird. Mickey, let's spin that next question, please, sir. Next. All right, question number two. In regards to celebrity encounters at your wedding, what's the best way to handle them? Oh, okay. All right, so the question is, is if there's a celeb at the wedding, like a guest at a wedding, which I had the police chief of Rochester at my wedding a couple weeks ago. It's like a mini celeb. Not a celeb. Um, but how do you handle that? <laughs> Uh, and th the thing is, is you don't, you can't have any publicity. You can't go what I'm doing right now. Right. Uh, because you know, Beyonce is at our wedding. Uh, you have to treat them like a normal guest. Frankly, if I'm in the restroom and some celeb is next to me, I ain't saying anything. I'll do, the, I'll do the cordial. Hey, what's up thing. You know, the usual thing that the guys do in the, in the restroom and stuff, but I'm not making a big deal out of it. Jordan. I agree. I mean, you know, if Rihanna's going to show up at a wedding this Saturday, am I going to fangirl a little bit on the inside? Because I have a job to do. I'm not going to freak out and be like, so unprofessional. No, I have a job to do. I came here and I'm getting paid to do this job that's important. So I don't care if you're a celeb. You're a human. You came to enjoy your there time. There it is right there. You put your pants on the same way I do. Yeah. Johnny Roach, what do you say you? <laughs> yeah, but no, no, yeah, but. but no, but. okay. It, it is what I, can you not do that? Okay, no, I, I, disagree, I disagree with you. No, so uh, it happened a couple times to me, not not a level celebrities, but you know, kind of, but B level, B level. Uh, I went to a wedding and the notes on my, my planning notes said that hey, the uncle of the bride was coming early because he was going to sing a song at the wedding and needed a certain track. And he was coming early before cocktails to practice with a microphone or whatever. And so I was ready early. And that uncle turned out to be Kirk Cameron. Uh, you're, you're way too young, Jordan. I am but, way too young. <laughs> but like when we were kids, that dude was pretty big deal. I mean, he was like teen heartthrob sitcom guy. I'm mean, pretty big deal. Um, and so I was having conversation with him because he's got a test on Mike or whatever. I thought it'd be weird if I didn't at least acknowledge, Hey, this is pretty cool that, you know, you're singing at your niece's wedding and you're Kirk Cameron. 
And so, yeah. So did I selfie up with Kirk Cameron to send it to my wife who fangirled out when I did that? Of course I did. Uh, I thought that was fun. He, I'm sure, appreciated it. Matter of fact, I thought it would have been awkward if I hadn't said something. I mean, um, I'm, I'm in the era, right? It was, it was kind of the in my wheelhouse that I would be know who this guy was. I, I felt almost like embarrassed to not say something like I'm blowing him off. Like he's not a big star anymore. So I did say something. We selfied up, said it to my wife. But of course I didn't like put it on Facebook live. Like, Oh, party with Kirk Cameron. We did right. lines in the bathroom. I think uh, a selfie no. is okay, but yeah. you going borderline like, Hey, let's go live on Facebook. So the like, question, I mean, did, did Kirk Cameron have a perm? At the wedding. <laughs> uh, no perm anymore. Well, actually, I think he did. I still have, so the pic- have perms anymore. I still have a picture of my phone. I think he had naturally a perm curly a hair. A permanent? I, I think Jesus gave some natural curly hair. <laughs> All right, Mickey. Uh, we're in the middle of a segment. <laughs> Question number three. We have more viewers on Instagram right now than we do on a YouTube channel. Just kidding. Hi, Go ahead. y'all. Go ahead. All right. Last question here. Announcements at weddings, are they good or bad for the vibes? All right, so announcements at weddings, uh, are they good for the vibes? I don't understand the question. You wrote it. No, I didn't. <laughs> I definitely did not write this question. I, I, I have I your stopwatch, but... Announcements. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to cut the cake. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a Honda Odyssey, New York registration, blah, 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 blah. your lights are on. on Those streets. types of announcements. Uh, I think less is more when it comes to announcements. Yeah. I hate announcements. It's not a ball game. I'll give the people enough that they need to know to, to enjoy the night. We got to know when cake's coming or, or dessert. We got to know when... When Jordan Ted are going to come out of the back room for the intros, right? We, they've got to be informed. So there's got to be an educational piece, right? But it's not a ball game. We're not at the bowling alley. You know, I'm not doing announcements for headlights are on or can yeah. you announce this or Birthdays. that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I communicate more through music. I, I don't even announce the damn dance floor is open. All right. Really? Yeah, I do it organically. What, what, what are you doing? What do you say? I mean, no, I'm not wishing people birthdays at someone's wedding i mean i'd like to hear what john says because we did this on friday with the like wedding anniversaries um but the the couple requested that they put that in their paperwork can you announce these wedding anniversaries that are today i'm far away from this mic and i need to be here um i don't like it it's just too much talking honestly on a microphone you get your basic announcements through and then other than that, I I feel like I like the dance floor announcement, you know, get this party started. Let's go kind of thing. That's what I kind of like. But, okay. you know, John, okay. how you feel? Um, I mean, obviously, I, I guess I, I really hate when you do that. <laughs> are, are really <laughs> doing that? <laughs> <laughs> like you ran up on me like. Uh, Is that I, Rich, I if know. you run up somebody. Or run up on somebody like that on the street, you won't get stabbed. Just saying yeah. that right now. <laughs> There's four people watching? Hey, four, y'all. Uh, man, <laughs> like rant. I, I'm saying, I'm, I got your back, John. If someone run, ran up on you like that on the street, you... you Isn't that crazy? I was like, what happened is there? <laughs> like, you literally ran. I wish you the camera was turned around. You can't, you can't do that, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, we're paid to make announcements. I mean, uh, I don't think it would kill the vibe if you're doing your job correctly. I, I think there is a fine line to gratuitousness. Like, are you talking to hear yourself talk at this point? I mean, nobody needs to know, like, who the artist and the song are, like... <laughs> You know, I mean, it's not, there's not a play by play thing that needs to happen, but I mean, look, we're paid to make announcements. I mean, it's one of the things that define a professional from them doing a Spotify list is that we're here to make sure that guests know what's going on. I think the best weddings ever are ones that are well managed, right? right? Like, I, I think nothing kills a wedding like, what are we supposed to be doing now, right? When guests are sitting there not knowing what to do or what's happening next or they miss something. So, yeah, no, I think if done appropriately, in the, you know, not only do announcements not kill a vibe, announcements make the vibe. I mean, you have to keep people engaged and know what's going on. Now, yep. of course, that's different than the gratuitous whatever. And look, I don't like when the DJ turns into the lost and found thing either. Like, hey, I found an earring. I found a watch. I found right. a cell phone. Yeah, right? That's what the bar is for, I, I, I guess. But yeah, um, and certainly my goal for a client when I'm doing planning with them is how do I as fast as possible get them to the point of the night where I'm no longer chasing them with a clipboard, right? Like you know, people realize when 
in their wedding, that all those things that seemed really important that they wanted done when they were planning anniversary dances and announce these people's birthdays and announce this, that, and the other thing, when they get to the night of their wedding, they're praying to get to the point of the night where they're just like off the hook. And I, I can be done, you know, having somebody tell me what I'm supposed to be doing next or whatever. I think everybody involved in your wedding looks forward to that. So right. in that way, yeah, announcements can kill a vibe, but I'm going to take the angle of no announcements make the vibe. And it's one of the differentiations that make us professionals versus what about Spotify list? this past Friday? Well, I mean, I think even the groom realized that there was too much going on. Right. I, mean, I mean, even he, as we were reminding him about some of the things he wanted to announce or, you know, some of these, you know, traditions that he wanted done. Mm-hmm. Even he's like, okay, yeah, we're scrapping all that because yeah. I'm done. I want to have drinks and party. I mean, at some point, you just got to enjoy the party and just yeah. like, shut up. I want to hear some Bruno. Right. I mean, I mean just, good lord. Right. And That's even the groom and, and Jordan and I were joking because this groom was really needy. I mean, he was. I mean, a great dude. Great. And if he's watching, he's lit. Hey, Alex, you're my guy. But uh, he, they had put a lot of things yes. right. Hey, in college, our tradition of singing the song to the girls, yep. and college this tradition, and you know, we want these anniversaries announced, and we want you know. Yeah. And very quickly, he realized as we got past the formals, and he was having fun and dancing. He scrapped all that. And we checked yeah. in like, hey, do you want to do this? Are you ready for this? He's like, yeah, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, my goal really in planning is helping a client get to that point of the night. If but- your client is really pressing it, though, that's when you want to obviously do it super early in that night. While yeah. t- So it's lumped together with that. Let's get all these formalities done and then you can enjoy the rest yeah, of your Yeah, Our job time. is to get them as fast as possible to the night where they're done with those things. Yeah. Um, but I do think that if you go to weddings that are unsuccessful, I think a commonality amongst weddings that are unsuccessful mm-hmm. are ones where there's no engagement. Like the, the energy level died because nobody knows what's supposed to be happening. Yeah. I've been to that wedding, right? You're sitting around, you know, oh, did they do a, a dance? Did they cut their cake? I mean, right. not like those things have to happen. But if you don't even know what's going on, there's no one kind of in, in managing the event. I think that's where things can go sideways. And there's energy loss in an event if the DJ doesn't step up mm-hmm. and keep people engaged of what's going on and what's happening and, and those things. So I think, you know, announcements in, in that way um, make the wedding happen. That was BPM, everybody. Yeah. BPM. All right. So that was BPM. Uh, Jordan, thank you very much for joining us. Johnny Roach. Hey, guys. Nikki in the box. <laughs> hey. All right. We'll see you next time. Hey, so uh, we've mixed things up to try to keep it interesting, but we're going to do an episode of uh, Set Up Wars. Uh, Jordan, who's playing producer. We brought the uh, personalities in, too. Well, we, I was going to get to them. Oh. Well, I had to say something. Go for it. I could have. I was just I was. You, not even on no, the, you need we the brought, microphone. We brought people in. There's Mickey, who is usually the producer. Now he's in John's chair. And then in my chair is Mikey V. How boring would that be if your DJ talked like that all night? Really, right? You know? That'd be you know awful. Anyways, uh, yeah. So switching things up a little bit. Uh, Jordan is in the box. That'd be horrible. Uh, we have Mickey and Mikey V. Uh, we I are doing. I know. We worked a wedding together. Oh wow. I, oh, that was crazy. <laughs> Who's doing Mickey and Mikey? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, there were a few people that knew him already that were there, so we they were able to tell us apart. But it definitely helped. I saw you guys at a wedding, and I really enjoyed Mickey. Is it Mickey or Mikey? Yes. Which one? And yes. yes. All right. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yep. So uh, here we go. Mickey V's. All right, Jordan, give us that first setup. By the way, this is Setup Wars. How this works is uh, Jordan, the associate producer in the box, is going to show us the setup that's been submitted by one of our DJ friends out there in the world. Uh, so thank you for being brave. We're going to do some, oh, we think, professional, fair critiques of the setup. So thank you for setting those in. We've had some good ones, Johnny. Definitely. We've had some good ones. We've had some good ones, and uh, Jordan's going to show us some. Here we go. Setup Wars. Ooh. Ooh. All right. All right, Mikey and Mickey. All right. That's so weird. There are some good things or some bad things. Um, I do like the up lights. I like that those uh, centered up lights are shooting beams up on the panels. Again, with the uh, terrible setup for the legs of the truss, that's a big problem. I love a good disco ball. Let's go, Kiki. Uh, <laughs> drop ceiling. I mean, I don't like the venue. I don't really like drop ceilings in venues. 
Um, just can't blame them. Doesn't, I, I yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering why they're set up in front of the like front office right there. Like, what's, <laughs> yeah, it does look like they just have a fishbowl like behind them. Like watching, yeah. I'm gonna watch Janet work on her <laughs> so, TPS reports doing while she's and overwatching the dance floor. Exactly. Yeah. They got some good moving headlights. It looks like they actually have, that, have them programmed. I would too. love to know what venue this is with the uh, the little Sputnik whatever lights that they've got in the upper corners there. You see that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Those little spot things hanging those. from the ceiling? They're not, I don't think they're there. It it looks looks like that's where one, COVID actually, started. Is that a one-way mirror? Or is there a speaker in the kitchen? It's a one-way... It's a, this wow. is at a police department. This is at a firehouse, I was going to say. Oh, like, this yeah, is, there's some somewhere. investigatory shit going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> where were oh you gosh. at 9.30 in the dance floor? Right. Uh, I mean... It, as far as like basics are concerned, yes, I understand the tripod legs are out. You know that that drives me up a wall more than anything. I'm not a huge fan of the truss over the top. I think there's other more creative ways that you can do the lighting. Uh, there's a whole debate online I saw the other day about do you put your lights up on the top of speakers? Um, but everything looks to be taped down clean. I'm not seeing any like loose cables or wires. Like not even up in the trussing, which is yeah. good. They've got it wrapped tight. Uh, everything is seems to be flowing in one direction or another, but it's you, you're not seeing extraneous wires hanging out or anything. Uh, I, the facade looks great. If you're going to do a facade like that, I think doing the, the, the striking columns with your up lights like that is a really great way to do it. It's If you're going to go that route, uh, I would prefer, since everything else is kind of blacked out, uh, as much as possible, I think having the the black panels on the facade and just kind of disappearing up against your one-way mirror there. Uh, we, I mean, we've got some pars up there, some moving heads. I don't I don't know about the. I think there's a time and place for the disco ball. I'm not saying that it should be ditched, but I I think that, I think it's venue dependent or, or event ball. dependent. <laughs> Mikey wants the disco ball. Oh, whenever come on, he's, baby, bring it every time he got it. That's Saturday um, Night Fever, but babe. I mean it's. It's a strong setup. Speakers look good, and you know nothing too crazy hanging out. Um, this is one of those situations where you know you've got to re evaluate where you're going to be before you bring everything in your garage, right? I don't think the disc ball, disco ball need to be made out. I probably would have swapped out the white fabric for the black fabric. Right. There's just too much stuff going on. The purpose of elevating your lights. This is the way to do it. I mean, this is a crank stand for Cripe's sake. There was a lot of effort putting into elevating those four moving heads and those four pars. It's a lot of effort. So do I look, it just looks out of place. If this was in a, you know, a, a nice banquet hall or a nice venue, that's a different story. But I think it's just contrasting. It looks like very out of place. Yeah, I don't think you need to go this far for like the fire hall, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, so I'm going to try to evaluate this just the setup. I'm going to try to take it out of the surrounding. I mean, I, I, I understand the critique of like, this is in some public building. I don't know if it's a library or it's like, like you said, like a police department or a fire station or a museum. I, mean, I don't know what it is, but it's obviously some kind of public space. Uh, and yeah, the setup's big for it. I'm going to try to evaluate it. Just I'm going to take the back background out of it. I think I really like it actually. I mean, there's some inherent danger to these gigantic crank stand tripods that are going to be out where the public can hit it. So mm -hmm. some, some placement things would fix that. I mean, moving that back towards the wall or whatever, but I tell you what, the lighting fixtures are, are, are nice. Like, you know, some nice moving heads. They do look like they've spent the time to DMX them because the moving heads are all the same color. The, the washes are all the same color. So they've taken some time to program this. So that's great effort. Um, I don't, as you know, I don't normally like white, white stretch fabric with the lights behind it, but the way they've put a uniform fixture behind each one exactly centered right. is a fairly pleasing aesthetic. And I like that it's a white light on the white fabric, if you're going to use that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it looks phenomenal. Um, some safety things for sure to fix. But this is a really good setup. I'm just going to try to take it out of the fact that it's like in the lobby of some public building. Considering the safety, I mean, I like it. It's at the firehouse, so they could be dangerous a little bit. So I give it an eight. Uh, I don't know if I'd go as high as yeah. that. I've, I mean, I mean, granted, this is you know, this is one of your first couple times doing setup wars. So you, you haven't you haven't seen all the ones that we have yet. Well, show me a good uh, one. Then. Well, you're I mean, a rookie. You don't know no, shit. Definitely just said what's in there. But <laughs> Mickey just told Mikey he doesn't know anything. No. Subtext. No. Well, he's much older no, than me, so. It's a true story. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, 
I don't know if Oz is more wise. But We're getting spicy here oh. in this set of words. I love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, 5.3. Whoa. Pew. Five and a half for me. You guys say all this like nice stuff and then more? crush them on score. I, I'm more critical. I always give them a better score. This is a seven and a half for me all day. This person put effort. They've programmed their lights. They're using good equipment. I think, look, some subtle thought about putting those crank stands in a slightly safer way. With all, with all, the only critique I would give it, I mean, personal preference, putting hairs on the color of the fabric. But this is nice, man. This is a nice setup. I'm, I'm at a seven and a half for sure. And extra points because I do think that with the white, the disco ball which doesn't always have a place i think really in this setup really matches the aesthetic of their setup and by the way they are making a comeback uh, those things i've not i've been asked more than once in the last month for one mm -hmm. is i just Seven i just noticed is there is there like a laser projector somewhere under there because i'm seeing like green sparkles Up on the, the ceiling top. might be like a starry sky or something yeah I okay think, i think you're right yeah. There's definitely some glow from the up lights behind the facade hitting the you know ceiling. Is, There's something behind there. The this is the, it's the disco ball. Yeah, it's the disco ball. And they probably DMX controlled them to the disco ball, so they get a good... Probably. Okay. Yeah, you can see that the pins are hitting the disco yeah, ball. They're... Yeah. Whoa! That is an expensive what? setup and venue. Holy My gosh. I want to eat cotton candy right now. There's not much to naysay about here. I like the podiums that the TVs are set up on. Mm -hmm. Cables are all tucked away nicely. The facade. Is that the DJ? That's the DJ back there. They're covered up nicely. The, the chandeliers, everything the like uplit and just, oops, sorry. The lights on the ceiling. Oh, wow. It's, it's a really good setup. And the moving headlights. This party is about to be fire. Absolutely. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many, like, I, I feel bad, like, picking out anything because anything that I do say is just going to be, like, so, like, detail-oriented, but, like, uh, I mean, the, the, the speakers on the tripods, for one. I mean, I'm glad that they left them at least clear with all that uh, white facade fabric mm -hmm. and the truss tans and everything. It disappears that way. Um, but you can still see, like, the, the tripod, like, sticking out in front oh, of the yeah. facade there. Um I'm wondering what is going on at the bottom of those truss towers under the TVs. Like they've got like, like bunched fabric. I think that's so that's, just, that's uh, probably more of an aesthetic choice. Right. I do like the the truss towers. I think the color is incredible, especially in this venue. And I like the moving heads on top as well. That works out very well. Um, and they did get them up high enough where they're shooting over the TVs, which right. is good. Uh, there's a lot going on that's good here. But I would, I would say just maybe figure out a different solution to at least cover up the bottom of the tripod legs, whether that's, uh, I don't want to say more white facade because you've got the white facade panels with the lights. I don't want to necessarily take away that, but I think even just like a black fabric or get them behind your facade. Johnny? Yeah, I would get the speakers the hell off the stage, frankly. I mean, uh, right. first of all, it's the only thing you don't have covered in a white stretch fabric because they stand out. It's like a spider on a white piece of paper. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. Like, I think there's some opportunity here, like in the eaves to the right and left of those windows. That's where I would have put the speakers. Let's get them off the stage. First of all, you got so much shit on stage. Like, you where have an opportunity stand? here to clear that up a little bit and get the speakers to the outside. Plus, it all it would probably sound better because you know the cone of sound coming out of those speakers, your your range of those. Half of it's gonna be hitting the back of the TVs, um, the way you have these things placed. So my this thing would have been a, a thousand times better if you just take those speakers, put them in those dark areas to the right and left of those windows. Uh, you'd solve that problem, and it would probably sound way better too. Like this is the first time that I think the white stretch fabric has actually nailed it, right? Like you nailed the aesthetic of the room. You have the pink uplights on a white ceiling. It, I mean, it just it makes it feel very cohesive in this case that they have the white stretch fabric. And I, obviously this event is calling for that. Um, so this is that perfect marriage of it's a, venue yeah. aesthetic with your aesthetic? Yeah, right? In. I think this is actually lending itself to the room for the first time uh, that I've seen. I, I, I'm trying to figure out where all those lights are on. I think some of them are on T-bars that are on tripods, and some of them, are, and one of the moving heads is on those, uh, the totems. So it's hard to see where all those lights are, are what they're attached to. But this, I think there's a lot going on on stage, and I think getting rid of those speakers would have helped. But yeah, this is a nasty setup. It's really good. Uh, I'm scoring this. I'm scoring this an eight. Uh, I mean, it's it's real delicious. I, I, I even love how they have the tops behind the subs, which you know, from a sound point of view, that's that's where they should be. I think it's a little awkward. 
I'm trying to think of like, yeah, that's the first thing I noticed are the are the stands, are the black um, you know tripod stands. But I'm trying to think if they put another piece of stuff on that stage, it, I mean, I think probably would have sent it over. It would have taken away from the double facade. Which, or, by the way, the backup DJ in the back of the lighting controller. It might even just end up collapsing at that point. What's that? It might even just end up collapsing at that point it's with serious, the sheer amount of equipment really good. they have. Eight and a half for me. Yeah, I'm an I'm eight and a half also. I mean, this thing could have been a damn near the closest thing to the best setup we've ever seen. If they had just something, I think, like we said, done something different. Even like you said, Rich, even if they just put those tripods behind the subs yeah. and moved them out a little bit. Or just the stand. Just, just grab the poles. Right, get, if they had gas poles on top of those yeah. subs to put the tops on, it would sound better. Um, it would have better range, and it would make the setup look, look way better. better but how are you going to critique this? I mean, for God's sakes, they got a they have a facade for the lighting designer. I mean, it's nasty. Rolled in for uh, with a with a trailer. I mean, this was this is awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, guys, that, you that's nice. Score? That's, you a, score? that's an eight eight for me. Eight two Regina for me. Regina and Christopher, they're really lucky to have whoever did the decor and lighting design for. Yeah, man, it's nasty. DJ's ready to throw mm -hmm. it. Out. Badass. I can't tell if those star patterns are like from a gobo or those built into the ceiling. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Oh yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah, this is a nice venue. I mean, those. I assume those those hanging fixtures are are from the venue. Man, this venue is nasty. I want to DJ here. Yeah. All right. That's Thanks, Rochester. That's definitely a venue we'd love to be in. Right Have there. one more there, Let Jordan. Us know if you uh, would like us there, we'll go. Oh, uh, where's the DJ? That's cute. Uh, behind the clock. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Stop. Really? <laughs> is the DJ behind the in the heart? In the middle of the heart? Like this I heart is sweet. DJ. Is the DJ gonna be? This in is that like heart? a Victoria's Secret yeah. catalog. Is that for real? Yeah. Like this is Dream. this is the this is the pink release party. I. I like this a lot. I want to go I buy underwear from this DJ. Models, yeah, but the, they, I'll buy the un they got the, the they got underwear. the evolves. Yeah, that's that's nice. I mean, uh, cable management. They they look okay. Uh, wait, what I mean the the speakers. Oh, All right. I don't Those see them. Evolve? Oh Mikey, yes, start okay. off, bro. Start it off. Okay, yeah. they're gonna have good sound. I mean, they got the subs, the evolve speakers. Those are nice, nice moving head, elevated, so they'll hit the dance floor and up. I don't really like words at events, but that's just because I don't, I, it's one of those things, it's a timepiece that you know you don't know how it's gonna evolve over time. But these guys don't have to worry about it because they're trying to be creative. This is definitely a set themed, if it's a wedding or event, it's they knocked it out of the park for what they were trying to go for if it's fairy tale princess meets Victoria's Secret. Uh, release party. Oh, okay. Um, you know, Rachel's going to love this, by the way. Yeah, this is He's going to make you buy all this no, shit for this your is, wedding. No, this is not happening. I'm sorry. I'm not having love at my wedding. That, uh, F that. That's what? dated. You don't That's no dated. love allowed I at my wedding. No, yeah. wedding. I love no my love fiance. Wedding. <laughs> I love her, but I am not putting that sign anywhere near my dance floor. Uh, the Evolve 50s, I'm sorry. I've heard them. I don't like them at all. I, I think they sound like absolute poo. Uh, I do Ooh. like the the tiered what trust he means towers is with, the, with the with the moving heads. <laughs> what? <laughs> What'd you say? I was doing translator. He's translating. Oh, okay. He said poo. I said what he means is excrement. <laughs> <laughs> what he means? Uh, but no, like the the tr I like the trust towers. The the cloud is a little interesting. The the uh, light up facade in the front of the DJ. If that is where there's they're DJing from you can't I can't really tell from this picture I do like the the pattern though from the uh, from the moving heads on the floor I mean granted those are that's gonna be lost so as long as those moving heads are actually like doing something during the dancing then that'll be really cool but uh, I'd, I'd swap out the speakers for something else I wouldn't I wouldn't use those unless you're DJing for like 50 people those aren't gonna do anything I, I think this looks pretty cool uh, Mikey I would challenge the brand and manufacturer so i think these are rcf uh evox mm. 12s i mm. think the 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 columnary up top is a little is a little big anyways they're white eh, i don't uh, know the rcf ones were actually the smaller they have a couple different versions the 12s are the big houses and okay. then it goes down to eight and six um this is obviously themed right i mean right. you know is note <laughs> I think so, John, because <laughs> I, I'm not rolling out with a heart in front of my uh, in front of my table, right? Um, <laughs> but I, I think they did a great job with you know the the the, the lighting scrims and and the. Uh, 
the trust towers and everything, the gobos. I mean, I, you you have adapted well to the theme. Absolutely. Yeah. I would have done a little bit more work with the lighting. The it's it's close, but if you look at like the trust towers and like the heart, and then look look at the uplight to the left of love. Those are technically two different colors. Oh it's yeah, kind of see that. driving me a little nuts. That could be photography. It's like when you forget uh, to put in the amber or yeah, yeah. What yeah. I mean, it could be photography. Mode. How have all three y'all given this a review? And Mickey spent half a second on it. You'd be DJing in a mother loving heart cloud. <laughs> what? How have y'all not? Everyone's talking, well, I think these are Evox 12s, and I'm pretty sure those moving heads on the total. We're evaluating You're the DJing setup, in a mother loving heart cloud. How have we not? What? Jordan. <laughs> what? Like, are you walking upstairs? I, how are you? What are you? I, I love that for me. Help me. I think there's like a tiny little stage back there, and I'm DJing. You don't, you don't want to be dancing on a cloud? Holy cow. I mean, how have y'all not even brought it? Rich is like, I think there's kind of a theme working here. You think? <laughs> You're DJing in a heart cloud. Does it suspend like Tommy from Motley Crue by flying around to that motherfucker? Dude, like, what are we doing in it? I was strapped Holy in, turned shit. me upside down over the dance now, floor. I Let's am go. praying to Christ. <laughs> this isn't like the day-to-day -day setup for this DJ, right? Like, is this oh. what's on their website? Like, yes, yeah, well, for every event, we're going to DJ inside the heart cloud. <laughs> wow. I can't <laughs> get past it. Out. It's crazy, me. It's like, this is like crazyville. Uh, it's, oh those are nice speakers, by the way. Do they rotate? Does it, rotate does it spin? Yeah. Does, does like, the, the lights chase in the heart? Now, the funny thing is we're dissing on this. No, I just, this is, crazy. This is a warm-up party for the, for the Victoria's Secret models. Is it really? Maybe. I don't it know. Could I mean, it could be. It could be. It could easily be. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm all over that event. Hey, it's great gear. Uh, it's well implemented. It, you know, it's... <laughs> Freaking batshit crazy, but it would sound amazing if they were RZF. I am just not a fan of those evolves. If they are evolves, yeah, I can't. Yeah, tell. Right. I'm not sure, but if they're evolved, sorry. Look, it's great gear. RCF, it's well implemented. It's okay. clean, and it is themed to shit. And someone's put a lot of work into this. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I can't even look around. All I see is his heart. I'm trying to picture myself walking up some stairs behind those hearts and <laughs> DJing inside a heart. Wookie, and I'm so praying that no one takes a picture of me. Alrighty, wookie, wookie. that was great. I'm gonna give it a. Uh, a heart point five. A heart point five. <laughs> well, my, my heartfelt rating on this oh. uh, is going to be uh, probably a seven. I, I've, I've run out of heart puns. I've got nothing left. But it is a, a, a strong, like, seven, I'm a heart, seven nine. We love you, Mickey. Uh, I have a heart on for this <laughs> setup right now. Damn. So. There it is. <laughs> That this is isn't a one. DJ setup. This is somebody like destination, and they chose individual pieces. It's somebody's for fever it. dream. I'm this is crazy. Right now, for my destination wedding, trying to, but we won't have any of, of that. <laughs> it, it'll be really hard to top. Uh, uh, you think? We gotta kill this. All right, all right. That, that's enough of that. All right, it's an episode of Setup Wars. All right, that's it for us. Another episode of the Real DJ Show is in the books. We want you along every time, so make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the little bell so you get notifications of all of our new content. We know you're DJs and have a lot to say, so jump in the comment section to join the debate. If you have content suggestions or you want your DJ company featured on The One Thing, email us at Show at rochesterdj.com. Lastly, if you're sick enough that you want to take the audio of this with you wherever you go, you can find the audio everywhere quality podcasts are found. All right, that's it for us. Show's over, bitches.